Welcome to Mythic Bedtime YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and share. The Sky Library In a world where most sought knowledge on the ground, there was a hidden gem above the clouds, the Sky Library. This magnificent establishment floated amongst the stars, its grand spires touching the constellations and its vast halls filled with books that glittered like the Milky Way. Eleanor, a young and curious girl, always dreamt of visiting this celestial institution. She had heard tales from her grandmother about the library's magical books that held the secrets of the universe, and the wise librarians who could read the stories of the stars. One clear night, as Eleanor gazed up at the stars from her bedroom window, she noticed a shimmering silver ladder descending from the sky. Without a second thought, she climbed it, each rung taking her higher and closer to her dream. As she reached the top, she was greeted by Orion, the chief librarian, who was not a man but a constellation brought to life. Welcome to the Sky Library, Eleanor, he said, his voice echoing like a soft cosmic melody. Here, you will find the tales of galaxies, the history of the cosmos, and the stories of stars. Eleanor spent what felt like years in the library, reading about distant galaxies, black holes, and the mysteries of the universe. She met librarians from different constellations, each with their own stories to tell. But the most magical moment came when she stumbled upon a book titled The Tale of Earth. As she opened it, she saw the story of her own life, her family, and all the memories she held dear. Realizing that every individual on Earth had a book in the Sky Library, Eleanor felt a deep connection to the universe. She understood that every life, no matter how small, had a place in the grand tapestry of existence. When it was time to leave, Orion told her, Remember, Eleanor, the universe is vast, but every star, every planet, and every life has its own story. And they are all here, in the Sky Library. Eleanor descended back to Earth, her heart full of wonder and gratitude. She knew she was just a tiny speck in the vast cosmos, but she also knew that her story, like all stories, was eternal and cherished in the Grand Library above the stars. Chapter 2 The Cosmic Quill Eleanor's days in the Sky Library were filled with wonder and discovery. Each book she read expanded her understanding of the universe and deepened her appreciation for the beauty of existence. However, one day, as she wandered through a secluded wing of the library, she stumbled upon a door she hadn't noticed before. Above the door was a sign that read the Chamber of the Cosmic Quill. Curiosity peaked, Eleanor opened the door and entered a vast room illuminated by a single, glowing quill that floated in midair. The quill was surrounded by empty parchment papers that seemed to stretch endlessly in all directions. Approaching the quill, Eleanor felt a pull, a connection. As she touched it, the quill sprung to life, dancing around her and writing stories on the parchment that she hadn't spoken aloud. These were the stories of her dreams, her hopes, and her deepest desires. Orion, hearing the commotion, entered the room. Ah, Eleanor, he said with a smile, I see you've discovered the cosmic quill. It writes the unwritten, captures the unspoken, and reveals the stories of one's soul. Eleanor watched in awe as the quill penned down tales she had never shared with anyone. Can anyone use the quill? She asked. Orion nodded. Yes, but only those with pure intentions. The quill doesn't just write stories, it has the power to make them real. With a mixture of excitement and trepidation, Eleanor took the quill and began writing her own story. She wrote of a world where the Sky Library was accessible to all, where knowledge was free, and where people lived in harmony with the stars. As she wrote, the words began to glow, and the room was filled with a blinding light. When the light faded, Eleanor found herself back in her room on Earth, the cosmic quill in her hand. Outside her window, a shimmering path led to the Sky Library, now visible to all. Eleanor realized that she had been granted a great responsibility. With the Cosmic Quill, 
she could shape the future and make dreams come true. But she also knew that with great power came great responsibility. Chapter 3, The Starlit Sonata The discovery of the cosmic quill and its power to make stories real brought Eleanor both wonder and responsibility. As days turned into nights, she spent countless hours writing stories, creating worlds, and giving life to characters. The library's vast halls echoed with the whispers of tales and adventures birthed from Eleanor's imagination. One evening, as Eleanor explored a distant corner of the library, she heard a soft, melodic tune. Following the sound, she found herself in front of a grand, celestial piano, its keys shimmering like stars, and its body crafted from cosmic dust. Sitting at the piano was a young boy, his fingers dancing gracefully over the keys, producing the enchanting melody. I am Lyric, the boy introduced himself, his eyes twinkling like constellations. I am the guardian of the Starlit Sonata. Every note I play tells a story, and every story becomes a part of the universe. Eleanor, captivated by the music, sat down beside Lyric. Together, they played a duet, with Eleanor's stories intertwining with Lyric's melodies. The Sky Library was filled with a harmonious blend of words and music, creating a symphony that resonated throughout the cosmos. As the final notes faded, Lyric handed Eleanor a special sheet of music. This is the Starlit Sonata, he said. Play it whenever you wish to bring your stories to life through music. Eleanor realized that the Sky Library was not just a place of books and words, but also of music and melodies. With the Cosmic Quill and the Starlit Sonata, she had the tools to weave tales that transcended boundaries and touched souls. Chapter 4, The Galactic Garden Eleanor's adventures in the Sky Library continued to unfold, and with each passing day, she discovered more of its hidden wonders. One evening, while she was writing a tale about lush landscapes and enchanting forests, a soft breeze carrying the scent of blooming flowers caressed her face. Intrigued, Eleanor followed the fragrance. She soon found herself standing before a magnificent door, intricately carved with motifs of flora and fauna. Pushing it open, Eleanor was greeted by a sight unlike any other. Before her lay a vast garden that stretched as far as the eye could see, filled with plants, trees, and flowers that shimmered and sparkled under the cosmic light. The ground was a soft carpet of starlit grass, and the air was filled with the gentle hum of luminescent fireflies. In the center of the garden stood a majestic tree, its branches adorned with fruits that looked like tiny galaxies. Underneath the tree was an old woman with silver hair, tending to the plants. Welcome, Eleanor she said with a warm smile. I am Flora, the guardian of the galactic garden. Every plant here holds the essence of a story, and every flower blooms with tales from different corners of the universe. Eleanor was enchanted. She spent hours with Flora, learning about the tales each plant held. She listened to stories of brave warriors from distant galaxies, of magical creatures from forgotten realms, and of timeless love that spanned across dimensions. As the night drew to a close, Flora handed Eleanor a seed. Plant this in your world, she whispered, and let the stories of the galactic garden bloom. Eleanor left the garden with a newfound appreciation for the interconnectedness of stories, nature, and the cosmos. She realized that tales were not just written in books, but were also woven into the very fabric of the universe. Chapter 5, Echoes of Ancient Melodies After her enchanting experience in the Galactic Garden, Eleanor felt a deeper connection to the universe. One day, as she was exploring a quieter section of the Sky Library, she heard a faint, haunting melody. Curious, she followed the sound and stumbled upon a grand amphitheater. The space was filled with rows of seats, all facing a magnificent stage made of moonstone. On the stage stood an ancient harp, its strings shimmering like threads of gold. As Eleanor approached, the harp played on its own, 
producing ethereal sounds that resonated throughout the amphitheater. She felt an overwhelming urge to play the instrument. As she plucked the strings, memories of old stories and forgotten tales flooded her mind. These were the stories of civilizations long gone, of heroes and villains, love and betrayal. Beside the harp was a mysterious figure draped in starlit robes, with a mask that resembled the faces of the moon. Greetings, Eleanor, the figure said in a voice that seemed to come from the depths of time. I am Melodia, the guardian of ancient melodies. This harp contains the echoes of stories from eons ago. When played, it revives the memories of those tales. Eleanor spent hours with Melodia, playing the harp and diving deep into the memories of the past. She learned songs that spoke of great battles, of peace treaties, and of cultural exchanges between galaxies. As dawn approached, Melodia whispered, Remember, Eleanor, stories are not just told, they are also heard. Let the world listen to the echoes of these ancient melodies. With a heart full of music and memories, Eleanor left the amphitheater, eager to share the stories she had discovered with the world. Chapter 6, The Timeless Room Eleanor's journey within the Sky Library seemed endless. Each day, she discovered new wonders and mysteries, but nothing prepared her for the Timeless Room. Hidden behind a door made of intertwined silver and gold threads, this room was unlike any other. Upon entering, Eleanor found herself in a vast hall filled with countless hourglasses of various sizes, each containing swirling galaxies and stars. The room itself seemed to be suspended in time, with every moment feeling both eternal and fleeting. A grand cosmic clock towered above, its hands moving in unpredictable patterns, sometimes forward, sometimes backward. In the center stood a pedestal with the largest hourglass she had ever seen. Within its sands were entire civilizations rising and falling, stars being born and dying, all in a matter of seconds. Beside it was a figure, draped in robes that seemed to be woven from the fabric of time itself. Greetings, Eleanor, the figure began, his voice echoing the wisdom of ages. I am Kronos, the keeper of time. This room holds the essence of time from all corners of the universe. Here, you can witness the birth and end of worlds, the ebb and flow of cosmic tides. Eleanor approached the grand hourglass, watching in awe as entire epics played out before her eyes. Is it possible, she whispered, to revisit a moment in time? Kronos nodded. Time is a river, and like any river, it has currents, eddies, and flows. With the right knowledge, one can navigate its waters. He handed her a small hourglass pendant. This will allow you to revisit any moment you desire, but use it wisely, for time is both a gift and a curse. Eleanor spent what felt like both moments and millennia in the timeless room, learning the intricacies of time from Kronos. She witnessed the rise and fall of galaxies, the birth and death of stars, and the fleeting moments that define existence. As she prepared to leave, Kronos offered a final piece of wisdom, time is the fabric upon which our stories are written. Cherish every moment, for in the grand tapestry of the cosmos, each second is a precious thread. With the hourglass pendant around her neck and a deeper understanding of the universe's rhythms, Eleanor stepped out of the timeless room, ready to continue her journey through the Sky Library. The End